Welcome to the Church of Thomas. Benedict uh, the 16th hides pedophiles. 527-11. One of the things that many people don't understand is that Pope Benedict has uh, <clears throat> a long history of hiding and collaborating with pedophiles. Uh, it is interesting that he was actually in charge of the council who was handing down the suggestions on how to deal with this crisis. Not to punish the pedophiles, but to hide the pedophiles. I actually came across an interesting document that uh, was written specifically on the rules of how to deal with the situation. It was called Cremen Solicitasis. Specifically, it talks about how to silence and threats of excommunication for those who were victims. Can you imagine the idea that someone is abused by a powerful figure and then when you try to get justice, the very people who are in charge of disciplining these people over you say, oh no, this is partly your fault Forgive the priest, it'll be okay, and if you don't, if you say anything, we're going to ex excommunicate you. Interesting. When law enforcement tried to find out the rules that were being used to govern how to deal with the crisis, they were met by all sorts of interesting obstacles, including the um, use of ambassador sta status, which originally was meant to make sure that ambassadors to other countries don't wind up uh, getting hurt or abused because they're part of another country. It gave them uh, immunity against prosecution. Well, the Vatican claims ambassador status in all the countries of the world, and all of the um, pedophiles <laughs> have been sort of blanketed under this uh, auspice. They're hiding them inside of churches and saying, oh no, this is, a, this is a sanctuary. You can't come in here and prosecute these people. And then they move them around so you can't find them. Benedict enforced these rules for 20 years. When the laws... Uh, when the law see cooperation a crime, it's called conspiracy. When criminal is hidden, it is called harboring a criminal. Both are punishable by prison. The only problem is these people aren't going to prison. It's only if the church turns their back on one of these pedophile priests or the priest comes out of the sanctuary that they get nabbed and prosecuted. And finding the documentation to prosecute them is like pulling teeth. There continues to be a sense of entitlement, a sense of the right to abuse authority, and they are claiming it is God-given. Again, this is wrong. Here is a Reconciler Gospel of Thomas. Verse 7, Jesus said, Blessed is the ravening wild animal which becomes a person when consumed by a person. This is the evolution of the soul. Cursed is the person who is the ravening wild animal that is consumed. And, and the person becomes a ravening wild animal when it is consumed. This is being ruled by animal passions. Now, it's ironic because the term pedophilia is a relatively new one. But the same rules that have been used to persecute uh, lesbians, gays, transgenders all over the world are exactly the same ones that in history were specifically from the abuse of power by a teacher against a student. All of these are falling into that category. But instead of prosecuting them, instead of handing over the documentation needed for the police to prosecute them, they're harboring them 
and they are still harboring them. Until this ends, the Catholic Church continues to be corrupt to the very core. God bless the entire world. Angel Eliza.